Hello everybody, this is Lara with your end of the year analysis for the S&P 500 for the trading week ending Thursday 31st of December. A very happy new year everybody. The year ended with strong upward movement to new all-time highs for the S&P 500. This wave count is bullish and my analysis remains very bullish as it has been for some time. I have a new next target is at 3818 where a multi-day pullback or sideways consolidation may develop. And then the following target at this stage is 4606, the short term invalidation point 370290. Elliott Wave Analysis first, Classic Analysis last. This is the weekly chart, the wave count is bullish, it sees a bull market beginning in March 2009, subdividing as a fifth wave at super cycle degree. Within that fifth wave, one and two are well off to the left of the chart now. Here's the end of three, four, and five. And so it sees a fifth wave at cycle degree beginning here and continuing higher next year and possibly the year after. This is a wave at cycle degree. You'd expect it to last from one to seven years. That's the usual range, although the S&P does have a strong bullish bias. And so those cycle degree waves for a bullish move can be longer than that. Those guidelines for how long those waves last should be approached with a great deal of flex flexibility. If my degree of labelling in here is wrong, it may need to be moved down one degree. If my targets are wrong, they will not be high enough. This analysis is very bullish. I'm seeing cycle wave five beginning here, and so far most likely unfolding as a five wave impulse. That is the most common structure for a fifth wave. There is only one other possibility, that of an ending diagonal. If large overlaps begin to show themselves, then I will chart and consider that possibility. But for now, let's go with the most common structure, because that means we'll be more likely right than wrong. The cycle 5 beginning as an impulse beginning here, we have primary waves 1 and 2 complete. I do have an alternate at the daily chart level which considers primary 2 continuing further, although there's enough up, upward movement here now and enough strength in this upward movement for that idea to have an exceptionally low probability. Primary 1 and 2 look likely to be over here. This is a relatively brief and shallow second wave correction. That's okay, this market has a strong bullish bias and there is precedent for this. Sometimes this does occur. If you'd like to take a look back at the first rise up from the March 2009 low, take a look at the first multi-week pullback there and you'll see it was under half of the prior first upward wave. So the first second wave correction in that bull market was about 40% depth of the corresponding first wave. And the next multi-week pullback as well was also relatively shallow. And so this is not unusual for this particular market. So we have one and two complete here and a third wave at primary degree beginning here, unfolding as an impulse and probably extending. When third waves extend, then they show their subdivisions at higher time frames. They look more exaggerated and so this has a really normal look so far for an extended third wave. Primary wave three may only subdivide as an impulse and so far within it, minor waves one and two may be complete sorry, intermediate 1 and 2 may be complete, intermediate 3 may only subdivide as an impulse. Let's see how it may be unfolding at the daily chart level, where this high for primary 1 will be on the left hand side of the chart, and here's primary 2, a zigzag, intermediate 1 and 2, intermediate 3 continuing. If this analysis here is wrong, it may be an expecting intermediate 3 has passed its middle portion already, when that may yet to be may yet come early next year or after a couple of months or so into next year. And so if my analysis is wrong, it will be a not being bullish enough. Intermediate 3 may only subdivide as an impulse. So far within the impulse, minor waves 1 and 2 may be complete. Minor wave 3 may have passed through its middle strongest portion. Or we could see minute wave 5 end with greater strength sometimes for a third wave of a third wave. The S&P does exhibit commodity-like tendencies and it can have strong fifth waves to end third wave impulses one degree higher. Sometimes it will do that. And so minor wave 3 also may only subdivide as an impulse. 
so far. We may have minute one, two, three, and four complete here, and now minute wave five unfolding. So far, for the last few weeks or last couple of months, this best fit channel has shown us where price is finding resistance and support. Draw it from these lows down here and then place a parallel copy up on these highs so that we contain as much of this movement as possible, hitting as many highs and lows as possible for greater technical significance. I'm going to be using the upper edge of this best fit channel as a guide to where minute wave 5 of minor wave 3 may end along with targets that I'll be calculating at lower time frames. I'll also be using the lower edge of this channel as a guide to where any deeper pullbacks may find support although we also have to allow it may be overshot and price may quickly reverse back into the channel. When intermediate wave 3 is complete, then a multi-week pullback or sideways consolidation for intermediate 4 may be expected and it may not move into intermediate wave 1 price territory. When intermediate 4 is complete, then I can calculate this target at 2 wave degrees and so at that stage it may widen to a small zone or it may change. For now, my target is for primary 3 to reach a quality in length with primary 1. Because primary 1 looks like a long extension, if primary 3 reaches a quality in length with primary 1, they'd both be extended. If this target is wrong, it may not be high enough. As we approach this target, I'll be looking to see if the structure of primary 3 looks complete, and if it doesn't, then I'll be calculating a higher target. Or, if price reaches the target and just keeps on going, then I will calculate the next target based on the next Fibonacci ratio in the sequence, 1.618. At the hourly chart level, I have two charts for you. Here's minute wave three and four. This will be the same on both hourly charts, and you can see where these are placed on the daily chart. And here's that overshoot of the lower edge of the best fit channel. This first hourly chart expects that on the way up to the target, we're going to see one, two more pullbacks or consolidations, which may last a day or two each. Also could be over within a day, if they're particularly sharp. This wave count sees minute wave 5 beginning here with minuet 1, 2 and minuet 3 incomplete with sub minuet 1, 2 and sub minuet 3 incomplete. When minuet 3 is complete then minuet 4 may not move into minuet wave 1 price territory. The target for both hourly charts is for min minute 5 to reach 2.618 the length of 1. Minute wave 5 has passed a quality in length with 1, it's passed 1.618 the length of 1, and so the next Fibonacci ratio in the sequence is now used to create, calculate the next target. I've removed the target for intermediate 3, I'm going to recalculate it when minor waves 3 and 4 are complete, and then I can calculate it at 2 wave degrees, and we'll see how it also fits with the higher target for primary 3. So again, if my targets are wrong, they're not going to be high enough. This analysis is fairly bullish. At the hourly chart level, both charts are the same to here and here and here, and then they differ. It's possible to see minuet 3, a complete 5-wave impulse over at this high, minuet 4 over here, and minuet 5 within minute 5 beginning here. The target is the same, but along the way up toward the target, this wave count expects to not see a pullback or consolidation lasting a day or two. sub minuet 4 could pass, possibly last a day, but it's more likely to be over within a session. It's more likely to be relatively brief and shallow. So this wave count is more bullish in that it's expecting pretty much a clear ramp up toward this target for minute wave 5 to complete minor 3. Within minute sub minuet wave 3, no second wave correction may move beyond its start below the short term invalidation point. At the daily chart level, I briefly outlined this idea at the weekly chart level. This idea considers the possibility that primary wave 2 was not over down here as a relatively brief and shallow zigzag, but is continuing further 
is an expanded flat correction. Expanded flats are fairly common structures, although they do most commonly occur in B wave positions, and then the next likely spot is a fourth wave position. They can certainly also occur in a second wave position. The way to identify an expanded flat is look for weakness in its B wave. In this particular instance, there is very, very little weakness in this upward movement, particularly when we look at market breadth. Market breadth has been leading price and, with the last all-time high for the final trading session of the year, also made new all-time highs. There has been a little bit of support from volume here and there along the way up. There's been some 18% upward days earlier back here. That's not the kind of behaviour we should expect to see for a B wave, and so this has a pretty low probability. However, low probability does not mean no probability, and we should always be aware of low probability outcomes. If my main wave count is invalidated first with a new low below this price point for the short term, but importantly with a new low below this price point and a breach of the channel, on the weekly chart level and first that daily chart channel, that best fit channel around this upward movement on my main daily chart, if that all happens then we really would connect, seriously consider this alternate wave count as a pathway forward and then I would be calculating a target for you for intermediate C. Intermediate C would be expected to move at least slightly below the end of intermediate A to avoid a truncation and a very rare running flat, and it's likely to be 1.618 the length of intermediate A. Primary 2 may not move beyond the start of primary 1. At the weekly chart level, there was a little bit of support from volume for upward movement for this weekly candlestick here, but not necessarily for the last two weeks, but I'm not going to read anything into that in a bearish sense because these two weeks both are short weeks and they're both holiday weeks. Price did close very near highs for the year and that's very bullish and it has support from market breadth. On balance volume remains below resistance but it's an upward sloping resistance line so it can move higher as price moves higher. RSI is still in neutral territory, there's still reasonable room for price to rise and for the S&P, RSI can reach fairly deeply overbought and remain there for a reasonable period of time while price can travel a reasonable distance. There is plenty of room for upward movement to continue before it becomes extreme and stretched. ADX indicates still an upward trend which is nowhere near extreme, plenty of room for this upward trend to continue. MACD is full ball bullish, supporting a bullish Elliott wave analysis. And ATR declining as price moves higher is absolutely normal and to be expected behaviour for this particular market. At the daily chart level, back here we had a dark cloud cover bearish candlestick pattern. It didn't have well it didn't have support from volume and we had another bearish candlestick pattern here which had some support from volume but only led toward a short term pullback so I didn't read too much into this less strong dark cloud cover pattern. It led to a tiny little bit of sideways movement and now price is continuing higher. There was resistance here about 3725 price moved down and away a gap up close above resistance was an upward breakout, a pullback to test support at prior resistance and now moving up and away. Absolutely normal behaviour from price and we'll expect to see that little pattern continued again and again along the way up. Price doesn't move in straight lines, there are little pullbacks along the way and when they occur it doesn't mean we've had a trend change, they are normal and to be expected consolidations and pullbacks within a bull market. ADX at the daily chart level also indicates an upward trend in an early stage. There is plenty of room for this trend to continue. ATR declining as price moves higher, normal behaviour for this particular market. On balance volume doesn't really have a reasonable range at the daily chart level for us to use to provide a signal. We'll see if that develops. RSI at the daily chart level still in neutral territory, at the daily chart level particularly it can reach deeply overbought and remain there for quite a while while price can move a considerable distance. Plenty of room for this upward trend to continue. MACD bearish at the daily chart level but I'm not going to read anything particularly much into that. 
Stochastics overbought, that can remain extreme for a very long period of time. This particular oscillator is best used in a consolidating market, not a trending market. What about breadth? Because this is particularly bullish. At the weekly chart level, prices made new all-time highs this week on balance volume. Sorry. The AD line has also made new all-time highs. Upward movement from price has support from rising market breadth. This is very bullish at the daily chart level as well. The AD line led price here. Price followed. It was a useful indicator yet again. Price is making new all-time highs. The AD line is making new all-time highs. Upward movement from price has support from underlying rising market breadth. This is very bullish. However, this week price moved lower. Sorry, price moved higher, but inverted VIX moved lower. This is a bearish signal, but I am not going to give this weight because it hasn't been particularly reliable. There is also now well over three years of bearish divergence, longer term, which we can't see off to the left of this chart, bearish divergence between price and inverted VIX. That may continue to develop, for, to develop for further years before the bull market comes to an end. At this moment, there is all of short, mid and long term bearish divergence between price and inverted BICs, but I am not going to give that much, if any, weight. It's also contradicted by bullish divergence at the end of the year for the very short term between VIX and VVIX. VIX moved slightly higher for the last week, yet VVIX volatility of VIX moved lower, which is associated with bullish movements in price. So this is very short term bullish divergence to counteract this short term bearish divergence. So on balance, I will read nothing into it at all, sadly. When VIX and when divergence between the AD line and price and VIX and price, when they are both in agreement, that's when I will give it some weight. But if VIX is diverging or contradicting what the AD line is telling me, I'll go with the AD line. That's how I'm approaching these two indicators or these two pieces of information alongside each other. For the final session of the year, price has made new all-time highs. Inverted VIX has failed to make new short-term highs, let alone all-time highs. There's short, mid and long-term divergence at the daily chart level. For the final session of the year, both VVIX and VIX are pretty close to flat. I'm not going to read any divergence into that. That's all for me with your last video analysis of the year. I am expecting 2021 to be very bullish and possibly through for another two, three or four years. And from a social point of view, I think we may be entering, or, and also a market point of view, we may be entering a time akin to the roaring 20s of the 1920s, which followed the global pandemic of the Spanish flu in 1918, 1919, 1920. I suspect we may see that pattern com complete again, and that fits with a fifth wave at super cycle degree in Elliott Wave terms, a time of exuberance and optimism and bullish, very bullish markets, and then a huge trend change and a massive crash, but that's some years away. For now, this analysis is extremely bullish. That's all for me to end the year for you. I hope all of our members are well and healthy, and I hope you all had a very happy new year.